Welcome to this second showcase of the launched coaster competition. I'll be showcasing all qualifying entries in alphabetical order of the creation's name. Each creation gets two and a half minutes to keep this showcase a reachable length, and after all the entries have been showcased, a community vote will open, letting you all decide on a winner that will receive a £20 Steam Xbox or PlayStation gift card. Below are the dates for the other showcases, and this showcase has a very special guest. Please welcome Moomin Little Socks. How are you? Oh, hello there. Uh, yeah, I'm good. I'm very excited to be here. Um, honoured to be here, in fact. No, thank you for being here. If you'd have told me two years ago that I would have Moomin Little Socks on my YouTube channel, I would have been absolutely starstruck. So thank you for joining. Oh, stop it. <laughs> right, let's get into the second showcase. So the first creation we have is Carrera de something tropical. I'm sorry, I'm <laughs> really bad at pronouncing names. That was brilliant. I loved it. <laughs> My pronunciation is uh, terrible, so be prepared. But this is a really good looking, absolutely huge Matt Corrinsman uh, launched coaster. It takes up like pretty much the whole map. I like the track colour. I think there's quite a lot of nice custom supports as well. The layout looks really decent. It looks great. What are your first thoughts, Moomin? Well, it, it's it's perfect that tropical is in the name because it, it looks tropical. The, the, they've obviously gone for a nature theme and uh, the use of foliage works really well here, even though it, it's not it's not detailed by any means, but it, it gives you the impression of what it's going for and what it would be in the real world. Yeah, I'm definitely seeing that. With some of the elements as well, it looks like it'd be a really good out and back coaster and kind of coaster that you'd see mm. sat at the back of the park that would look really, really good on yeah. the sight line, especially with some of these really large elements. I feel like that would look really cool. Well, absolutely, because I think a lot of times when people are building coasters and planet coasters, they're going for a concept more than anything else. So when it comes to theming, sometimes it, this is all you need just to go, this is the idea I'm going for, even without the, the, the need for, for ultra detail. Yeah, I agree. It looks really realistic. We're going to talk through the POVs as well, by the way, I didn't say. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fine. It's a really smooth coaster as well. You can tell the creator's definitely taken a lot of time to smooth this, which is really appreciated. I'm going to take this opportunity during this POV to say how little I know about coasters. But what I can say is I agree. This is very smooth and very enjoyable. Yeah, I mean, that's why I'm glad I've got you here. It's definitely good to have a range of people to look at these different coasters, because as much as you don't have to be the biggest coaster nerd, you can definitely appreciate all the different elements of a coaster and smoothness, and especially the theming. There's a lot of really cool themed coasters in this competition, which is really great. Exactly. Um, and for me here, also, it's, it's such a small detail when it comes to colour, but they've used such specific pastel colours here. They've not gone ultra vibrant. Which is interesting with the tropical theme where it is, is normally not over the top. And this is quite subtle, but it really works. Yeah, like you said, it's a really nice track colour and it's mm. like really subtle as well, which I think is why it works so good. Yeah. On to the next coaster, we have Cursed Tower, which is a really nicely themed Gerslauer coaster. Definitely giving me vibes of a coaster called Karnan, which is a Hansa Park that has this indoor drop in the tower like this one does. And it kind of fits with a similar vibe of the theme. I like all the different elements on here. There's a lot of different inversions and airtime moments. And it's a really nice size for a blueprint coaster as well. Like if I was going to make a blueprint coaster, I'd definitely make one like around this size, quite small, because it gives you more of an opportunity to focus more on the details and the theming. Absolutely. Um, I, I'm i quite partial to a Gerslauer only because I think they're relatively easy to make um, and I think that works for a lot of people and creators like me who aren't super into their coasters and how to build them. I find them really intuitive in the way that they're built and it just all makes sense and easy to replicate from real life creations like you mentioned um, what this reminds you of. But uh, yeah, I think it's just uh, a really good creation and, and I was also going to say that the again a, a subtle theming but enough to really sell the theme that they're going for. Yeah I always have an appreciation for people that put like this amount of realism and detail into ghost flowers. I really like them in real life as well but it makes me think of the uh, detailed one you made for was it a very <laughs> British park? Yes I've made a couple at this point yeah. I think they're quite satisfying coasters to make as well because they use a very like standardized list of elements Mm -hmm. So they're kind of like really nice and I wouldn't say easy, but 
quite, well, yeah, easy to get source material of to build anyway. And they're just very, like, good classic coasters you have in your park, and they're definitely crowd pleasers as well, so I can understand why a lot of people make them. Yeah, they're very, they're normally quite short and punchy, but they're really working perfect for a, for a launch coaster as well. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's really good, it's really fun. It's, it's, it's quite a rapid coaster. Yeah, the sets of elements from Transitions, there's some really funky ones, they're really good. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, really enjoyable. I really like how nice and small this coaster is. It kind of feels like a really efficient blueprint in terms of you can just drag and drop it into like any part because it doesn't really take up a lot of room. It's got a nice compact layout with bits of theming. I feel like it works quite well in that aspect. Yeah, absolutely. On to the next coaster, we have Dark Souls. Now, if this is inspired by the game, this coaster has done such a good job. The coaster looks really, really nice. The track color is very unique. Lots of really cool inversions. And just from a first glance of that station building, it's absolutely stunning. The detail's great. I completely agree. The um, yeah, the level of detail that's gone into this is incredible, and the track really works with the build. It, it, they've done this such an incredible way that it looks like it's kind of snaking in and out. Like I don't know, it's almost like viscous. I don't know how to describe it. It's uh, it's really interesting. Yeah, I think the track colour looks great. It definitely doesn't, mm. like, it stands out, but it doesn't detract away from the detail of the building, which is really cool. Like, I think it just works having the track and the supports, these two different colours that complement, like, the palette of the build. It just works really nicely. It is, and it's quite difficult to make a coaster flow with the scenery around it, but this one just feels very organic and uh, very seamless. Yeah, I know I've done it a few times where I've tried to build a piece of scenery and then build the coaster around it and it never really works, but it kind of feels like like these two were designed together in unison because they flow together that well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100%. I think I said earlier as well, but just the way that it interacts with this big structure in the middle, like it's clearly very intentional the way that it does. And oh, that sea serpent roll is really, really nice. Yeah. Very, very smooth layout and interesting coaster. <laughs> Just a little bit of dirtiness. It was, yeah. No, it was um, a really good use of um, track colour change there as well. As you went in inside, it kind of had like a, a dip into what I imagine is like a, a pool of blood type vibe and the track colour changed with it and that really worked. I think it's really cool how this creator's managed to get terrain work in a blueprint as well because obviously you can't have terrain in blueprints. Mm. Like just creating those changes in elevation is really impressive. I thought we'd have a quick look at night there as well. Although the night lighting is very subtle, it really, really works. It's really impressive. It is. And don't think I didn't notice the transfer track there, which I, I appreciate a lot. Yes, we love a good nerdy transfer track. <laughs> On to the next coaster, we have Drakenflong. I'm really sorry for all the different pronunciations of these coaster names. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a really cool concept. It's not a particularly well-known concept as well, because there's only one. It's like a Gerslauer launched inverted... Is it a, is it a boomerang? I don't know. No, it's a uh, <laughs> shuttle, but yeah, shuttle launch, whatever it is, it's very, very cool. I enjoyed the description. It was great. Yeah, I'm um, not great at those, uh, <laughs> but it's a very new coaster type, so I'm glad to see it's getting some representation in this competition. I think it's good to mention the custom supports as well, because they blend in so well. Like, they look like real life ones, like they were intended in the game. I know the game ones don't look great, but they look exactly how they would for this coaster model. Yeah, well, the, the first thing that I thought when I saw this was just how clean it looks. Everything is seamless and every inch of it is covered, whether it's even down to the ground, which is all, I assume that's all custom ground um, layer at the bottom there. Um, it's, it's just very compact, it's very clean, it's very tightly um, designed. Love that queue as well. Yeah, it's a very clean coaster and you can tell this crate has used the piece camp very efficiently. I mean, quite a lot of it's been used on um, custom supports, but I'm definitely not complaining about that. Mm. It's a bit like the last creation as well, how it's kind of built up onto this custom pad. It creates like changes in elevation which you can't normally get from a blueprint because obviously the terrain doesn't carry over. I think it just works really effectively and all the flybys with the uh, pieces of scenery as you go around the layout are really good. Yeah, I was going to say those troughs that they've created, obviously as you said, they couldn't do that without raising the terrain up um, 
manually with a custom ground. So yeah, again, it works, works so well. And yeah, the same word again, it's just all very clean. And I really, I really like this one. Yeah, same. I really like the theming as well. Like it's really subtle, but definitely very realistic. This is how uh, like parks would do it. And I loved to just, I had to go into Tejucam to uh, mm. get views from down ground level because it looks really, really good. Yeah, and that track is chunky, isn't it? <laughs> but it really it works for this coaster. Yeah, I really love the track color as well. It's not something you see very often, but it's nice. No. Yeah, I love this one. Keeping the dragon theme going, we have Dragon Showdown. Now, I haven't actually included any cinematics for this ride because the creator almost implied that, like, the coaster's all hidden behind this big facade and it's sort of like this secret kind of vibe. And so, yeah, I, that's how I wanted to record it anyway, but it's really, really cool how it's kind of hidden away at the back. I'm already excited. I don't even know what to expect. I just love how the queue's kind of like nestled in all this foliage that you're walking through and then this big kind of like overgrown castle warehouse just appears mm. and all the coasters behind it. I really like that effect. Yeah, we're just about to go on the coaster, but I'm really excited to go back on it again. The creator also asked for this to be filmed at night and you can definitely see why. Lovely dueling element there. It's definitely giving me a lot of like Hagrid's vibes, but the ride area itself is like a lot more um, open, yeah. so you get more interaction. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, this is fantastic. Can you hear the audio as well? It's got on-ride audio. I can. Yeah, the whole thing is giving me massive fantasy vibes, and as I said, yeah, the, the Hagrid ride it does uh, it gives those feels. It's constantly changing environments as well, like it's not just all oh, sleeping dragon. Mm. <laughs> like it's not just all foliage, there's like changes in, like this is a lot more like intimate in the cave sort of thing. It just works really well to like build story and you can kind of see that this coaster would almost have like a really in-depth backstory. Yes, I love any coaster that incorporates a dark ride section. And it's not easy to do either. It's a um, dueling coaster as well, so you pretty much get double the ride experience. Which, it's not to be understated how difficult that is to achieve. Yeah, to like time the dispatches mm -hmm. up perfectly, it's a lot of tinkering. And we've had so many interactions with the other train, which is incredibly impressive. I think with dueling coasters as well, it can be quite difficult to keep the ride entertaining while you're constantly trying to get the trains to interact with each other. But no, this one definitely keeps up the pace, keeps the layout interesting, mm -hmm. and actually has really good interactions throughout as well, which is really difficult. Yeah. Well, I can see why this person's called Cool Coasters. Yes, definitely. The next coaster we have is Drift the Racing Experience. Now, I'm getting really classic Intamin vibes from this, sort of a mini Formula Rosa from Portaventura. The theming with this is done, like, so efficiently. Like, it's really, really, really realistic. This is exactly how you would see, like, a really high-tier amusement park theme their coasters. Like the theming's really subtle and I'd say it's kind of more stylized, but this is completely realistic on how you would see parks do this. It does, it just looks really realistic, really believable. I can see this in any UK park or any European park, definitely. It, um, I love the seating here as well, it really does sell that uh, Formula One racing vibe. If I was visiting this park, that would definitely be where I would sit to have my lunch. Definitely, yeah, some great sight lines. I love that, um, the path going over the um, track as well. I was just looking at that sign. That sign is really nice. Mm. Great queue as well. Yeah, I like how the whole area is kind of built up around the coast. A really unique station as well, a nice maintenance area just out back. It is. It's so easy with stations just to create a simple box with the grid pieces. So I admire anyone that puts the time and effort into doing a custom freeform build. I think this ride has custom audio as well, which is really cool. Either the coaster's been like designed around the audio, or the audio has been designed around the coaster, but they just work so well together. Yep, that, and we've got um, triggers as well, using the sequences with the lighting and the sound effects. Yeah, it's definitely a very complete package of a coaster. It really is, yeah. Yeah, which is almost pretty much exactly what I was looking for with this competition. Like, yes. to create a complete package, and this just does it really well. Use of the ride cam time machine there as well. Yeah, that was cool. Again, like simulating the use of terrain. 
mm. by having like, the train go underground and having the ride camera turn off for that is really cool. Yeah. Especially just adding the underground thing, which you can't do terrain in blueprints, it's cool. Yes, definitely. That final inversion, it just here is definitely a homage to um, Maverick at Cedar Point, which famously had its inversion removed because of how intense it was. Like the profiling, the speed of it is so similar. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, ultimately, as you said, it's the full package. It ticks every box of anything that you can include in a coaster. It's got a fantastic ride sign, it's got sound effects, it's got lighting, it's got music, it's got everything. Our next creation is Emerald Blaster, a really cool looking launch coaster, and you can definitely tell why this creator asked this coaster to be showcased at night. The lighting on it looks really, really nice. I still haven't nailed the art of really subtly and perfectly lighting a coaster like this. It's definitely something I need to look into, because this looks great. It does. It, it's uh, The art of lighting in Planet Coaster is uh, its own expertise, and the, the, the thing we all aspire to is to creating subtle lighting, and it's not easy at all with the everything's always overexposed in Planko, so this is really impressive. Yeah, it looks really, really nice, and I say lighting is probably something I have struggled with, but no, I, d I definitely still struggle with lighting in this game. <laughs> it's just really, really difficult to get right, but this creation definitely does that, yes. like the accent in lighting on the coast is great. Yeah, but you, you frequently see creations like this that show you how it's, it's extremely possible to create fantastic lighting and uh, something to aspire to. Yeah, I'll definitely be going to my park after this and working on the lighting. <laughs> I love this view from the station as well, just the drop straight into the launch, it's very cinematic. Yeah, I mean, a huge part of coasters is that feeling before the, the ride starts, and uh, what more would you want than seeing what's to come? Yeah, creating anticipation on your coaster is yeah. an art in itself, and it's really nice. Oh, absolutely. This coaster is really, really smooth. It is. It's. Uh, I was just thinking, it feels very like glidy. <laughs> That's a great word, but um, yeah, it's, it's a really fast fly by pigeon there as well. <laughs> yeah, no, this is great. It's really like well considered force wise as well. Like quite often when people build such large coasters, well, say when people, I've done it countless times. Like it's so easy to make the forces way, way too high just because of the sheer size of it. Like you could have way too much air time and too much force in the valleys and taking the turns at too high speeds. But no, this coaster feels very, very well considered when it comes to forces. This crater definitely knows what they're doing to create such a like floaty, airtimey, kind of glidey type of layout. Yeah, I think a lot of people go straight to going fast and furious, whereas sometimes it's nice to just take that step back and go, let's create a family coaster that's enjoyable for for all ages. Yeah, that's probably the best piece of advice I could give to like a beginner of the game, just start off small. Mm. But yeah, great work. Definitely. Yeah, great coaster. Speaking of really great family coasters, we have Expedition Gold Fever as our next one. Really, really nice themed coaster. But it's a really cool concept. I can't work out whether it's Vacoma or SNS or sort of Mara, but I've never really seen a launched mine train before. It's a really unique concept, but I like the idea of it. But then again, it's a launched coaster competition, so seeing variety is always a really, really good thing. And I never expected a launched mine train, but I'm glad that we've got one. And I love how it's like kind of sat on its own pad, creating the landscaping again, because you can't make landscaping with the game sort of in blueprints and making your own. It just works really, really well. Yeah, I mean, this already from that shot from above has shown me uh, a few things that I, I love about compact coasters. You've got the facades of this um, rock work where you've got the the flat side on the back of it to show that it's all uh, a fake piece of scenery. Um, I've seen transfer tracks already so yeah already enjoying this a lot. Yeah obviously I always love it when people theme coasters but to realistically theme a coaster it's like the next level. Mm. Like putting in all the detailed facades behind it and kind of the structure that is holding up all of this like fake landscape in the theme and it's just a really really good attention to detail. Absolutely and it's not easy to do I mean by nature these rocks are spherical <laughs> they're not flat so to create that flat back to it is really difficult but they've done it and, and it works and it really sells it as a realistic coaster. I feel like building scenery just out of like purely rocks is especially hard because like it must be really difficult not to just spam them everywhere. Mm. The rocks on this feel very purposely placed, like creating trenches and caverns. It works really nicely. Well, it just makes the whole experience so much more immersive and really sells that uh, spaghetti western theme. 
I feel like with having the theming and the rock work and like these caves and caverns and features so close to the ride as well, it increases the like perceived sense of speed yeah. in a really interesting way. That works really, really well. I really enjoyed that little um, water pool. I don't know how they even created that, but that was um, really impressive. I think it was with trigger pieces, which is really cool. Yeah, nice. There's a lot of triggers throughout the ride. They've uh, done a good job mm. with those. I had to showcase a bit of this coaster at night as well. This creator asked for a very specific time to look at the night lighting. And yeah, you can definitely, definitely see why. <laughs> it's become clear. On to the next one, we have Falcon's Fury, which is a launched B&M wing coaster. It's a really, really big coaster, but not in terms of its height. Like It's definitely a, a lot more of a long, sprawling layout, which is really, really interesting. And I love that launch lift hill. And because it's like so low to the ground, like the last one, it creates like a really unique sense of speed that you don't really get on this type of ride very often. Especially if a coaster of this type, it's nice to see one that's like more low to the ground and interacting with its terrain. It's just definitely a lot more unique B&M wing coaster. Yeah, this is um, huge. <laughs> it's, it's a very large coaster, isn't it? But uh, I love that station made out of rock work. That's again, similar to the last one, not easy to achieve, um, but they've done that really well. It's nice to see different rocks as well as different foliage building it up, like it's not all made of the same thing. Mm. You can see like vines and stuff growing out the station, it's a really interesting like style of coaster. It is, and I'm loving just all of the unique themes that we're seeing, like each one has got its own story to tell and this one, it, 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 it's got that alpine, I, I just, it feels really like fresh, like a refreshing coaster, I don't know what that, where that comes from, but uh, that's the vibe that I immediately get from this. Just. Um, I don't know, it just feels clean, it feels nice. I think that's definitely been the most satisfying thing for me personally whilst doing this competition is just seeing the sheer variety of stuff and different types of coasters that people have created. Mm. Like the way I work, because it's like quite intense short bursts, I can quite easily get bogged down into what I'm working on. And I think I just kind of think it's like my style and there's not really much I can do to change that sort of thing. But then you look at all the different stuff that all of these creators have done. Like you just see that there's so much more to be inspired by out there. Mm -hmm. Like there's countless different ways to do coasters and theming and layout and you just can't help but not be inspired. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. The, the work I see on a daily basis from people is incredible. And yeah, this is another example of someone who knows exactly what they want and they've achieved it. Really nice subtle use of uh, night light in there as well. The cool hues fit with the theme really nicely. Yeah, yeah, great coaster. On to the next coaster, we have Flame Runner, which is another launch B&M coaster, but this time it's a launched B&M surf coaster. Again, it's quite a new concept that B&M have only actually done one of these coasters, but it's nice to see people experimenting with this coaster type, and I think it's especially difficult because there isn't much precedent with this coaster, with there only being one in real life, which I think kind of means you can be more creative as well, because most of it hasn't really been done before. And it's orange. <laughs> yes, it's very orange. A very that's, moomin coaster. It's it's a moomin coaster. There we go. Done. That's that's all I have to say about it. Well done. A very moomin coaster. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this looks great. I love them. Um, all the inversions, and again, the speed of it. It's not quick. It looks lovely and well paced, but with um, some really nice twists and uh, as I said, inversions. Yeah, I mean, with the name Surf Coaster, it's kind of like supposed to be, at least with the one at SeaWorld, it's supposed to be kind of giving you the sensation of like standing up and surfing. Mm -hmm. So the kind of concept of it is that the elements will be quite smooth and floaty, yeah. not really intense to kind of give you the sensation of that you're like surfing. So trying to make a coaster replicate those sensations is quite difficult. Absolutely. Well, it just shows that they've done their research in what this type of coaster would have and uh, they've done a great job of it. The custom supports as well are always really appreciated, but especially because of the nature of this coaster and it not really being an intense ride. You have to be like slightly more specific about how the supports work on this and like obviously with there only being one coaster as like precedent to go off, this great is a very good job. Yeah, definitely. It's a really, really smooth coaster as well and how all the elements are like really nicely and smoothly floating into each other, like the transitions are very considered and definitely very B&M. 
It is, and yeah, I mean, going back to what you said about it being a stand-up coaster, it, it can only be travelling at a certain speed, and it's just very well controlled. Yeah, yeah, it's especially because of like the nature of a stand-up coaster, you almost need to be like extra considerate on how the forces are yeah. like exerted on mm. the riders. Like especially more the vertical g-forces like being pushed down because you don't have a seat to be pushed down yeah. into it's like definitely needs to be considered <laughs> a lot more the next coaster we have is flare which is a launched wooden coaster and i'm so glad to see people are doing launched wooden coasters especially because now anyway they don't exist in real life especially because the only one that like we've ever really seen isn't a launched coaster anymore because it became a maintenance nightmare it's nice to see it having like a bit of a revival but the custom supports on this just look insane the theming's really really nice and it just works fantastically i think as a like self-contained blueprint overall i just think it's a really interesting concept of a coaster well, yeah, just going off of what you said, it's something's brilliant about Planet Coaster is the ability to a create things that don't exist in the real world, but b to take things that exist and then keep them alive forever. Um, whilst things are removed, we can keep coasters alive in the game, and that's something special in itself. I think what I love so much about this game is that the fact that like how people can still create new things just constantly amazes me like i mean how old's the game mm. now is it 2015 2016 it came out 2016 yeah so like yeah it came out 2016 the fact that people are still finding mm -hmm. new things to make like you would never really get that with any other game i think no like i don't know maybe something like minecraft but it's just fascinating mm -hmm. how there's a constant like creative drive for people to create new things it's really really good it is, and this is another example of that, and seeing something that I haven't seen before, and this is an incredible creation. It's, it's immersive, it's compact, and going back to what we were saying at the start, it, it's, a, it's a perfect coaster to just drag and drop and put it in another park. Yeah, it's almost created like its own mini themed area around it, which works really nicely. Mm -hmm. The creator also asked for this POV to be uh, like shot at a very specific time, and I just love the track lighting yeah. and the like sun casting over the like the, the colours look. It really does. Like really, really, really good. Last little view of this coaster was the really cool night lighting. I love that covered section over the like launched hill with the triggered effects. Yes. Custom supporting as well looks great, but as we all know how tedious it is, custom supporting on a wooden coaster is just that extra commitment. It absolutely is, and that first drop is just incredible. Yeah, it really is. On to our next coaster, we have Forester, which is an absolutely massive Mac launch spinning coaster. Mac Extreme spinning coaster, sorry. And it definitely fits the extreme name very aptly. It's absolutely huge, got loads of really nice inversions, and as you can see, it's definitely inspired by Rides of Happiness at Plops of Land Japan, which is a coaster I want to get on so badly. <laughs> but I absolutely love the look of this ride. The area feels really, really complete around it, like surrounding the coaster. And I also love the really subtle styling of it, like it works really, really nicely. I think it works nicely how the ride's kind of created on this pad which is like just how it would be in an actual park, like just this mini area around it. And it does feel like one of the coasters in this competition that could quite neatly slot itself into any park and just make it better. Yeah, it just looks extremely true to life. Uh, as you said, with that concrete pad, it, it just flows. And in a lot of budget parks where they don't go over the top with the theming, this is exactly what it would look like. Just a small amount to give it that Alpine theme uh, that it's going for with the the shacks and uh, the the nature yeah it just really works and it's um, really simple and this is a, a concept that I use frequently it's just really generic strip back yeah it's a very well presented coaster but like really generic as well but in a really really good way mm. like the whole design of it just feels very clean and clearly well thought about it's also by the looks of it like a very efficient use of piece count like I know 4,000 pieces sounds like a lot but especially when you have to custom support an insanely large coaster like this then that piece count will quickly dwindle away so this creator's used it very very wisely by the looks of things like just custom supporting an entire coaster isn't an easy task anyway but managing to do it inside of a blueprint limit is just that extra 
bit this crater's gone and it just looks like such a complete and hyper realistic ride which is not an easy thing to do no definitely not yeah i'm uh, i'm quite a big fan of this one actually even though it's so simplistic in its theming it just really sells what you would see in the real world yeah it's such a great ghost and it just feels like a really complete package it does and uh, a great control on the spin as well which is no easy feat yeah, that was why I recorded two POVs actually, so you could see track view and spinning view, just in case it was like quite out of control, but no, it was like really well considered and definitely never went out of control at any point. Great job. Yeah. Brilliant. The next coaster is Galactic Trust, which is another ghost flower, so you should like this one. <laughs> definitely inspired by the smiler with like all of the inversions so compactly packed in together and just an absolute mess of track in the best possible way and with a really interestingly executed theme as well, unlike the Smiler, which I wish his theming could be a bit better. I love all the theming and custom supporting as well and like quite a few of the coasters in this competition, just feels like a really complete package. Enjoy the shade being thrown towards the Smiler. Oh, I love the um, thing, it's still my UK <laughs> number one but it, it yeah. needs work. <laughs> it does. Uh, yeah, this is fantastic, really unique theme. Um, with the sci-fi but heavy nature theme as well it's a really interesting mix yeah i feel like with a lot of sci-fi and futuristic creations like this one it could be quite easy to have everything like very i don't know minimal and mm. like stripped back like you just think of it as like clean white walls and mm -hmm. glass and metal everywhere but no this is like a really fresh different take on that theme which is good it is yeah Great custom audio as well. I was just going to say, yeah, <laughs> I was enjoying that. Yeah, this looks uh, fantastic. I think it continues onto the ride as well, but I had to showcase this one at night because the lighting just looks amazing. You seem to be repositioning my main power booster. It's so immersive when creators do like this, like creating a whole backstory for the coaster. It's fascinating. It is, and, and I want to say, don't give me my silence <laughs> twisted. Like, I'm, I'm, it's immersing me, and I'm interested in uh, what's happening with the the story that's telling, with the the sounds and everything that's happening with it. Yeah, it's really fascinating. I've never seen a coaster like this kind of. Oh, <laughs> don't want to get interrupted by the audio. But I haven't seen a coaster like this in a while, where it's like so on top of each other, but then so like ingrained with theming. It's really good. It does great interaction with the uh, the other coaster train there as well. I really like this bit here as well. Where it like dives down into this room, but because of all the star cloth, you can't tell mm. like what orientation you are, whether you're upside down. <laughs> And it's exactly what a park would do on a budget. If you, you want something to, to uh, imitate space travel, it's very easy to do that and just switch all the lights off, have a couple of inversions inside, and that's uh, all it takes to really sell that. Our next coaster is Golden Eagle. And now, how I said earlier, it was like refreshing to see a smaller B&M coaster like that interacts with the ground a lot more. Like This one definitely doesn't do that. It completely owns the area that it's in. It's absolutely huge. Like it just looks great and all the interaction you get as you're like speeding through the trees with the foliage and the near misses is definitely what makes this ride for me. It's so good. It looks fantastic already. That queue is uh, quite epic, isn't it? I would queue in that for this coaster, it looks great. <laughs> that inversion out of the station looks so good. Yeah, that looks great. Um, but yeah, the, the, it all looks very clean again. I was just looking at that station building, that's fantastic. It is. Yeah, the whole thing just looks... Uh... Fantastic. It really sells the theme. And transfer tracks. Yeah, the transfer track's nice. Always. And just all the beam work in the station, that looks incredible. And we we do love beams, don't we? We do love beams. They have to be <laughs> my most used piece in the entire game, definitely. Yes. I should just do a park one day of, like, beams the park. <laughs> just, yeah. Just, well, everything is just trims. That's just everything. There you go, the uh, beam and trim coaster. <laughs> I was challenged to make um, a park entrance complete out of trims once, so I did that, I succeeded. Oh, nice. Well, you know what the next challenge is now then? Create an entire park out of trims and beams. <laughs> <laughs> Don't challenge me. Yeah, this is fantastic. This is a really, really great coaster. Just the scale of it, it's mm. it's epic, isn't it? Like, Even though it's like that big, the speed's definitely being well considered as well. It's very impressive. 
Yeah. Yeah, I mean, epic was exactly the word that I was going to use for it. I don't think I've ever had the confidence to pull off a yellow coaster this well as before, but um, it definitely works. <laughs> it's bold, isn't it? But it, uh, yeah, it does. It works. Yeah, this is what I was on about earlier as well with the like interaction with the trees. It speeds through them. I really like that effect on coasters. Mm, definitely. And yeah, that coaster station is beautiful. It really is. <laughs> we love beams. <laughs> we do love beams. I hope this isn't a hot crunchy. She might get um, a bit wet in that station. <laughs> yeah, we'll assume so. Nice quick look over the area to finish the showcase of this coaster. Really great work. The next coaster we have Horus. Now this is a very interesting type of coaster as we only have one of these in the world. It's a launched Vacoma flying coaster. And again, this creator has made a whole like built up area around the attraction itself, which is really impressive. I just love how it's like dipping and diving throughout the plaza. And it really helps to make that off ride experience like pretty much just as good as the on ride experience. It makes the area feel like so much more immersive and alive. Like, especially how it's like diving into the trenches and going over your head is really, really impressive how it all comes together. Definitely. I, I mean, I do love a plaza, and that is a very well made plaza. It's uh, it's not easy to do uh, a curved edges like they've done there, and um, that's really impressive. And I mean, I think the sole thing that sums up how I feel about this is I'm just excited to ride this one. Yeah, it's definitely one of the more unique coaster types that, I mean, it exists in real life, but it is even harder to replicate because it doesn't exist in the game. Like quite a lot of the coasters we've seen today, actually, that just don't exist in the game. It's really clever how it works, but I love how this coaster interacts with the area. Like scenery and plaza interaction with the coaster is something I always try to do because it makes the area just feel so much more like immersive and impressive and mm -hmm. like this crate has definitely done a really really good job of that. It works really really nicely and kind of like interacting with everything. It does. It's very graceful this coaster as well and the speed's definitely been really well considered like especially when you're in the flying position you want the forces to be like relatively gentle on you. Mm. So, like, you can tell this has definitely been considered well. Yeah, it's a really well-paced coaster. I'm enjoying the speed of it. I'm imagining that if this crater didn't have the piece limit of a blueprint, that, like, all the theming would just be taking over the entire area and be, like, even more immersive. Yeah. Like, I feel like you could create a whole... Not even just a themed area, like, a whole, like, mini park probably around this, like... It's got a really nice theme and like you can see it lending to other attractions in the area like flat rides and stuff. Absolutely. I think it just work well as a complete package. Yeah, I'd like to see more from this creator. Notice that this coaster is two meter smoothed as well, which mm. like this coaster type isn't easy to smooth just by itself in the game, so like taking it that extra effort and two meter smoothing it's really, really good. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, this is really fantastic. The next coaster we have is um, is it Huida? <laughs> Huida? Huida. Huida. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a much better way of saying it. Um, this is a really nice uh, new gen Intamin Blitz coaster, and that holding top hat just looks so cool. Definitely inspired by Gotham City Escape at Part 1 of Madrid. It is, yeah, and, and a brilliant aspect, not only for the coaster riders, but for those on the ground watching it. It, it. it adds to the skyline. Yeah, it's just like I could spend hours watching Oblivion go down the light drop. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like the scene that it creates in its own plaza, mm. like it makes such a focal point. I love the inspiration of uh, Gotham City Escape as well, it's really cool. And this ride actually has a bit of on-ride audio for its pre-show scene, so I'll let you listen to that. Oh, amazing. Prepare yourself, there is a bit of a jump scare. <laughs> <laughs> Terrifying. And my speakers are broken. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. I think this has to be my favourite track type in the game as well. It's just very satisfying the way it looks and it's smoothed really, really nicely. Oh, that top hat holds great. That's uh, fantastic. flow has been like, really well considered on this one, like the actual pace of the experience as well. It's really, really smooth, as you can see with this inversion just here. Really well done. I can also tell you that Huida is Spanish for flight. Ah, interested to know. So there you go. Well, I'm glad I've got you here because I can't pronounce or know what half these words mean. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely didn't just Google that. 
feel like ruined it now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is uh, really good fun, and it, and it does it matches the name perfectly. Oh, that was cool. Mm. Like a double down with triggered lighting and audio effects. Absolutely. Great use of triggers again. I love little triggered theming pieces like that when you're on the ride. Mm -hmm. It just adds to it so much. It does. Yeah, great coaster. I can see that definitely fitting into like loads of different parks with just the way it's built, like a drag and drop kind of style. Yeah, great job. Absolutely. Javan's Revenge is our next coaster, and in terms of smaller thrill coaster blueprints, this fits that brief literally perfectly. It's so well designed. It's inspired by Untamed, as you can see, which is really great, and it's just great to see launched unique coasters as well, like having launched RMCs in this competition is really, really enjoyable to watch. It's another blueprint that contains theming as well, so I love how the coaster just kind of hovers and interacts with this themed area. It's a really well designed package, and yeah, it's just really impressive. I'm extremely impressed at how much of a world has been created here in just a blueprint. Yeah, definitely. This is, uh, yeah, amazing. I want to explore it. Yeah, the ride interaction with the scenery has been really well done. You'll see a few of the facades here and when I do some more cinematic shots later, but just how this coaster like interacts with the area that has been built around is really, really realistic. That build there. It's 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 so hard, I say this all the time, it's so hard to create a detailed facade. Yeah, especially just, just a building front. People just put some walls down, slap windows on and call it done. But to go to that deep the level of um, putting those extra details on, it really sells it and uh, yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, it's always really difficult to like not make your facades look really flat. Mm -hmm. Like it's definitely something that I've struggled with before. Like with them not having 3D parts, they can kind of like blend into the background. But with these having mm -hmm. like actual bits that stick out, and the view kind of changes as you walk past it. It's just really, really impressive how the process can do that. I love the playfulness of RMCs, like, you can always get some really unique like, elements out of it. Like, the coaster's barely carrying any speed towards the end, but it's still packing in mm. like, airtime and inversions and all sorts, and just quick view of the night lighting as well, it's just such a well-designed ride. Yeah, this is, uh, this is just a great coaster. Great coaster, great theming with the, the area surrounding it. Brilliant. Just a quick look at the backstage area here as well. Like we were talking about earlier how like creators making facades behind the theme of the coasters just adds so much more realism to it and just all of these facades are just really, really nicely designed, like the three D parts of theming and how it kind of creates this plaza around the first element. It's really good work. Keeping trends going, we have yet another wooden launch coaster. I'm really glad people are experimenting in this competition, and definitely lots of wooden coasters, launched ones, it would be really, really interesting to see. But this one's called, is it Jirisan? <laughs> they're making this really hard for you, aren't they? I know, I think they're doing it on purpose. <laughs> Either that or I just can't speak properly. <laughs> the foliage on this ride's great, and like the interaction with it. I know the forest is on fire, that's not great, especially because it's a wooden coaster. Definitely not. I'm not sure how the health and safety would work with that, but there we go. I love that really detailed building just at the top of the hill, it's really, really nice. Mm. Some great themed audio as well on this ride. I don't think I recognise this one from the game, it might be custom audio, but I could be wrong. I think this is the Gears of Fear music. I might be wrong though. Only in my most recent part, I started to add that music around the areas on the ride, so mm. it just adds so much more to the game. Yeah. Ooh, that is a very unique inversion. I really like that. <laughs> I'm just thinking about the amount of time it would have taken to get the fire triggered with the car. That's um, that's very impressive. I don't really like hangtime on coasters, but I mean, mm. that was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like I said, I love how the like fire is following the train around the uh, layout, and that must have taken so so long to trigger up. Yes. Yeah. It's one thing I've noticed with this creation is like the creator's commitment to get the coaster exactly how they want it is really nice to see. Mm -hmm. 
This coaster just keeps going. It does. Oh, I think we just got squished by a boulder as well. Fantastic uh, interactions throughout as well. Yeah, I really like how it's got like a slow scene with some sort of themed element mm. and then it kind of speeds straight out of it afterwards, it's nice. Yeah, definitely. Nice view over the area there as well as it, as it burns down before us. Definitely, and if, it, if it's the creator that I think it is, um, I'm not surprised because they are brilliant. It's a really cool nightlight in there with all those trigger effects. Great job. The next coaster we have is Yomanganda, which I can actually pronounce this one, so <laughs> well done. I'm happy with that. This is the perfect example of an Intamin multi-launch blueprint in a themed area. I mean, just look at it. It's immaculately and really well themed as well. Like, I love how the theming's kind of all around the ride. Like, quite a lot of the time you can have it where the theming will like just be in the queue or in the station, but every single part of this ride is themed and stylized. Mm. Like the coast is kind of giving me some vibes of uh, Condor at Wallaby, Belgium. Like the station and the queue are really, really nicely themed, but then actually on the ride there's no theming, whereas this just completely outshines that there's theming everywhere. It is, and uh, it's it's just seamless, isn't it? And I love those ruined pieces. It's no secret that I'm a big fan of them. Um, but those white rocks are really fantastic, and I love that that's what they've chosen to go with, and uh, they've just kept it going throughout. I like how they've chosen like a material and colour palette for the entire area mm. and that just works really, really effectively. Like even if you put all the immaculate theming aside, this coaster has been done so perfectly realistically. This crater has definitely spent a lot of time doing precedent research onto how this coaster type works because the accuracy is just like next to none, it's perfect. Like that twisted top hat, I've tried for countless hours trying to get the shaping and profile right and for that stall there, but everything on this is just really, really well profiled. Yeah, as I said, I don't know much about coasters, but this feels real and feels smooth. It's great, is basically what I'm trying to say. I even mentioned the custom supports as well, like, you almost, like, don't see them in a way because of how perfect they are, you just expect them to look like that, but the in-game ones look, like, very, very shocking, so the fact that you've managed to pull off the supports so perfectly so you can fit in and, like, almost barely even notice them is just a, such an achievement. Yeah, I'm a big fan of this one. Some absolutely gorgeous night lighting over this creation as well. I love the mix of colours against all the foliage and like how it bounces off the track work. Yeah, just really, really well done coaster. On with keeping the trends of names I can't pronounce, we have um, <laughs> Lariat, I think it might be. Yeah, I'll go with that. Again, we have another very nice uh, LSM launched Intamin Blitz coaster. Quite similar to the last one, but also in its own way very, very different. I think that's probably why I love Intamin so much as well, because their coasters just offer so much creativity. Like, you can do literally anything, and they're so all unique from each other. I mean, the profile on that top part is also great as well. Slight tangent there. <laughs> like, you can just be so varied with, I think, Intamins especially. Like, with two coaster types like we've just seen that are literally exactly the same model, they're so different and have, like, their own personalities and set of elements. I just, I, I just don't know how you guys come up with so many great designs. It is, um, and I'm really appreciating the amount of people that are going for the alpine nature vibe of their coasters, because it is something that's used quite well, because it's something that could be achieved on a budget, um, but it really sells when you're on a coaster. It really works, and uh, yeah, I think this is really well done. supports once again are definitely a very nice addition considering this is a console build as well like it must be even harder to put custom support on console with the controls i know i definitely struggled and the, i find the pc control so much more intuitive but even the smoothing as well like it's just immaculate smooth mm. yeah it is really good
it's hardly surprising these days, like, the, the level that's coming out of console is phenomenal, and that's another great example of it. Yeah, I mean, my last competition was won by uh, someone on console, Mr. Antonio, so it's, yeah, really, really nice to see console creators pushing the PC builders, it's great, and the night lighting on this is just absolutely stunning. I love how there's, like, different parts of different colours. When you get that level of highlight on coaster tracks right, it just just works. On to the next coaster, we have a really, really good example of a very small and well-considered blueprint and coaster. We have Lil Ripper. I love how much of like a small area this coaster takes up, but then it still packs such a good punch. Like it's a really efficient ride. You could see it definitely being like cloned across a couple of parks. Like it just works really well. This is my kind of coaster. <laughs> I, I like small. I like compact. Um, this looks really fun. I'm uh, excited to experience this one. Yeah, I just think small little thrill coasters like this, you can be so much more like creative when you limit yourself to something this big. I mean, a perfect example for me would be Formula at NH Like It's such a compact thrill coaster, kind of in the same style as this, but it still packs such a punch, and it's one of my favourite rides, I was going to say in that part, which is one of my favourite rides in general. I just love getting back on it. But I just think there's such a market for them as well. Like, they're really good coasters for, like, people who are only just getting into, like, the really big thrill coaster market. Having coasters like this are just kind of, like, the perfect addition to... Mm. like bridge that gap between family coasters and thrill coasters yeah i mean that's what i'm I, i'm all about on my channel is just going small but detailed um as i've <laughs> become very known for um all of my builds are very small but uh as you said it just allows you it gives you that time to put in the detail that's required yeah it's great yeah, it's definitely true with like smaller builds how it's probably a better way to go, like definitely park building wise, because you can definitely spend a lot more time with the creation, get to smooth it, theme it more, add more details. Definitely. Yeah, this is great, and I love the name as well. Yeah, it's got a great name. Moving on from Lil Ripper, we have Little Beast, which this coaster is definitely not little. It is a beast. It's absolutely huge. <laughs> yeah, this is a really nice looking coaster and the custom supports look fantastic. Yeah, I mean, I like all things little with Little Rock Ridge and Little Treasure Cove, so I'm ready for Little Beast. It certainly is a beast. I really, I really like that top hat as well, how it kind of spirals downwards using the support structure. That's really unique. Kind of using that support structure multiple times as well as like the train passes through it and that airtime hill there. It's really, really clever. Yeah, this looks fantastic. Once again, I'm just excited to get on it. And custom supports are really nice, but like I said, I just love how it reuses the same supports yeah. like with the top hat. Yeah, I did notice that. Like the, you can tell the supports are a lot chunkier and they've definitely been taken into consideration how much force would be going on those compared to like all the rest of the supports around the road. I love them. Proper chunky supports. <laughs> <laughs> and... Some lovely um, detailed cues as well. Yeah, again, another creation that feels very realistic and like grounded in reality, which is lovely to see. Nice little maintenance area out the back there as well. Of course. What coaster is complete without them? I like those custom launch fins on the track there as well, because this coaster doesn't actually have the like magnetic launch function, so the creators added those with custom TMT gate bits, mm. so that's really cool. That is a really nice detail. Once again, like quite a lot of the coasters, the speed's been really well considered on this, it feels really realistic. Mm. It's probably very easy with a large launch coaster especially to make the speed feel very out of control and way too intense, but no, this one nails it perfectly. Yeah, there's a lot of great control on this coaster. I don't know what it is as well with like black coaster track, especially black intamin track. It's just like mm. just really, really good. All my favourite coasters are just black intamin. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, it's just yeah, I love yeah, I know them what you mean. so much. They're just like such a aesthetic choice. <laughs> That's just how it works. 
Yeah, let's just coast a low. <laughs> <laughs> On to our next coaster, I've been really excited to get to this one, it is Loophole by the one and only Jan. I've been really, really looking forward for you to see this one, like, it's really, really nicely themed, the coaster's great, and I think he, like, only just managed to get this in under 4k pieces as well. Well, all I have to say to you, Jan, is, c'est très bien. I don't know much French, but I actually know what that means for once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, a big fan of Jan's work, so uh, excited to see this. I think this is the only one that we've actually got guests in the park as well, which is really nice. Then we have, that's a, a nice touch for a blueprint. That facade work is just absolutely stunning, and I love this little room in the queue as well. There's a video on Jan's channel, though, which I highly urge you watch, which goes to the backstory of this coaster, which is really in-depth. It's really good. Oh, wow. And as you probably know, Jan by now is incredible mm. with triggers, and that board is just so well done. The time it must have taken to do that. Yeah, I'll definitely have to check that one out. I'm I'm a big fan of the uh, the spooky vibe, and uh, this is just selling it really well because it's so easy to go over the top with it and go stereotypes mm. and cliches, but this is um this is really subtle and it really works. Yeah, he's definitely done a lot of work with triggers on this ride, and spotlighting it at night was easily the right choice it looks fantastic as you'll see when we get on the coaster like the sound design and the lighting and the trigger work it all interacts like with the coaster and as the train speeds past it's really clever how it's been made absolutely and um nice touch of the sci-fi in, in with the spooky as well it kind of i don't know it gives like a frankenstein vibe yeah it's a great combination of theme in this launch sequence mm. it's so clever now i don't know if you've noticed but it actually uses that same launch straight of track twice like, you can imagine if the game allowed it, it would be a switch track there, which is really cool. I don't think I've ever seen someone do it in that way before, it's so crazy. Yeah. Like, once it's finished this green section of track, it'll go back onto the launch like it is here, and then go onto the red section. It's just really, really clever how it works. Yeah, that's really cool. I really need to learn how to light coasters as well as this. Like, it's just so neatly done. <laughs> Jan, come teach us. He's made me a uh, personal tutorial before <laughs> on triggers. As much as the tutorial, he made fun of me a lot. Uh, <laughs> it was genuinely life-changing, yeah. it was yeah. great. I really need to just look at how to light coasters this well as well. Like, it's so like thematic, mm -hmm. the way it's all done. Very good. On to our second to last creation, we have Lotus, which is a really unique concept of a coaster we've only just started seeing, really. It's a launch to B&M family wing coaster, but like this one's... I feel it's like a lot more thrilling, so it might not even be a family coaster actually, but it's like, yeah, it's a lot more thrilling but on a smaller scale. I just find it absolutely fascinating how it's like weaving in and out through all these structures. It's immaculately smoothed. The whole like theme of the area is really nicely done. Just like the creator must have had such a commitment to get this as realistic as possible and it's really, really paid off. It just looks like immaculate. Yeah, I mean, you said most of the things that I'm thinking to be honest but it just looks very clean I love the style that's used here I'm not even sure what, what that style is called but I've seen it across a few different creations in Planet Coaster but um, it just works so well um, it's almost kind of like art deco-y but it's uh, yeah, it's really great yeah once again there's like this person's created like a mini unique themed area mm. Like, there's a lot of detail going on, uh, like, around the buildings and the plaza area and the different structures like this. Mm -hmm. Oh, and the custom supports <laughs> as well. I didn't even mention yeah. them because they just look, like, so perfect. Well, that's the best type of custom supporting, isn't it, when uh, you don't even notice it? Yes, definitely. It's, like, such a well-considered speed as well for this coast, like, going through all these elements. Like, it's definitely very intentional, the pace it's going. Like, especially if it's a family coaster. Mm. And it just kind of feels like the perfect pace to be taking all of these elements, of, especially that inline twist there. And just the whole layout feels like really stereotypical mm. B&M, but also like really creative. Like just that slight off-axis hill there, it could have just been a straight hill, but it's just so much more unique. Yeah, it's a lovely balance. But like a thrill family coaster as well, of, of its scale, it doesn't really take up a lot of room, which is great. Like you could, like I've said quite a few times in this episode, you could very easily put this down in any park, theme it in a variety of ways. And I just love some of these detailing bits down here of theme it. It just gives you, it paints a picture of what the surrounding park would look like. And I'd love to see more of this. 
yeah, a park in its whole style would be really, really interesting. Definitely. On to our final coaster, we have Luna, which is a really nicely lit up coaster at night. And it's actually inspired by Moonsault Scramble, which was a boomerang shuttle coaster that used to operate at Fuji-Q Highland. And it had this really interesting set of inversions that you can just see here. And it's like a really loving sort of recreation, in, like modern inspired by, take on that coaster. And I just really like that about this creation. Like those custom supports look great and unlike the here uh, original counterpart, like this one would probably actually stand the test of time as well. Yeah, it just looks really, really well done. Everything looks very well thought about and really cool inspiration behind it too. It is. I, I'm, it's such a unique design. I love those oversized supports. It just, uh, it, yeah, it's very interesting. It's very eye-catching. Yeah, I mean, if someone told me they were going to do a modern, like, inspired coaster of Moonsault Scramble, this would be exactly what I think it'd look like. It's just really, really well done, and you can tell this creator studied that attraction a lot. Like, it was a very interesting and technical coaster to begin with. To, to design something that was inspired by it like this must have been really, really difficult to do. Definitely. And, I mean, contest is all about... The, the, thing, the thing you're always going for is being unique something that stands out from the rest and this definitely does that yeah especially when you enter like a competition the scale of this like i never expected to have over 100 entries to the competition so there is almost that fear that it could become a little bit oversaturated and kind of the same thing over and over again but when you have a creation like this that's so unique from the rest it's really refreshing yeah definitely and lit beautifully as well we've had some really really nice night lighting in this episode <laughs> yes yeah. The creation was asked to be spotlight at night, but I had to have a look at it a day as well so you can get a better appreciation of the layout and the custom supports and everything. But yeah, it's a really, really well put together coaster. I uh, thoroughly enjoyed this one. Yeah, fantastic work. And with that, the second showcase is finished. Thank you so much, Moomin, for joining me. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on the channel and your amazing insight into all these creations. Thanks for being here. I wouldn't call it insight. I'd call it just a British guy blundering his way through a video. But uh, <laughs> it's been an honour to be here. That's just what I do regularly anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. But no, thank you very much for asking me. And uh, all fantastic creations. Cannot wait to see the rest and, and to see the results. Yeah, thank you. There's been some really amazing creations so far. And I can't wait to see all the rest of them and show them off to everyone as well. Below are the dates for the next two episodes of the competition showcases. I hope to see you all there. And then after the fourth showcase, the community vote will open so you can all vote on your favourite creations. Thank you again for watching and I will see you in showcase number three. Goodbye. Bye bye.